This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today we're going to be talking about, and I'm going to be showcasing to you more so than just talking, talking and showcasing to you my top five rarest Chanel sunglasses of modern times. Now what does this mean? This means that, you know, when we talk about Chanel sunglasses, there's a huge uh, collector family out there, people who are really into Chanel sunglasses that uh, usually jump on the 90s Chanel sunglasses, which are deemed to be the most popular and famous Chanel sunglasses out there, just because a lot of uh, hip hop stars, other stars, singers, starlets um, out there wear them and uh, hence they become these popular items that everybody runs after. So you might think they're rare, but they're not so rare because the second a famous person starts wearing them, all of a sudden everybody else from their archives, from their collections starts selling them, hoping to uh, garner a lot of money from them. But truth be told, fashion continues and evolves. It evolves whether we want it or not, just like love, life keeps passing, time keeps passing and um, it evolves whether you want it to or not. So Chanel, the brand, will be here long after we're all gone. Uh, it's a kind of a scary thought, but also a very fascinating thought. So I always think ahead, I think for the future, and I'm thinking, well, the sunglasses that are new today that maybe nobody really cares about today, they're going to become vintage tomorrow. And when they become vintage tomorrow, all of a sudden, somebody from some styling group somewhere is going to discover them and give them to some starlet of the moment and that starlet is going to wear them and then everybody's going to want those glasses. So things that you might think today are irrelevant and you, nobody's talking about them, tomorrow they might just become the most it vintage piece out there. That's why you got Jacob to show you from the Fashion Bunker archives already today what will become iconic tomorrow. Before we get to the, this wonderful selection of these really rare pieces, I would like to ask you, if you haven't already but wish to, consider subscribing to my channel here on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Super Jacob, all spelled together. You could also, also push the Join button next to the subscription button and become a member today of my YouTube channel of The Fashion Bunker and gain extra perks. You could also join me on Patreon, Super Jacob, all spelled together on Patreon as well where you get to see a lot of videos that never come to YouTube. I would like to thank my patrons and members who have already pledged, and I would also like to thank my co-chatters that are chatting now live in, um, in my stream here, because this video is being filmed live in front of a virtual studio audience. So, let's get straight to it. Um, the first... Um, shades I'm going to show you are indeed not new. And in fact, they're not the number one, two, three, or five. This is just an example to show you what usually people go for. When you talk about rare Chanel sunglasses, usually the first thing that people are going to go for is this. And this is packed, very sturdily packed, and you can see already poking through there the chains. So this is something that usually people would go for, the chain sunglasses. See how I pack them? The desiccants, you have to protect that. This is leather and metal after all. So this is usually hold on you guys, because as you can see this is very well protected and packed. This is how we do it in the archives. And just for the sake of this video, I'm not putting gloves on, but usually I would have gloves on as well. Okay. So we have the infamous chain sunglasses, which honestly, I mean, from 1990, fall, winter 1992, you could wear them around your neck. You know, you, you close them up down here, and then you wear them around your neck like this, and then you just lift them up to wear them. So 
Infamous not because some starlet wore them in some music clip video, but infamous because Edina Monsoon, Jennifer Saunders, of Absolutely Fabulous, wore them the year or a year after they were released. So this is when they were not vintage, when they were when they were brand new, is when Jennifer Saunders styled them on her character of Edina Monsoon. And that's amazing. But they've gained cult status later on, decades later. Now they're vintage. But this is not what we're talking about. This is the classic idea what today people have of, oh, rare Chanel sunglasses that uh, are vintage, that mean something, pop culture, history, fashion history-wise. Yeah, they're amazing for what they are. But this video is not about that. So this was, I just showed this piece to you to explain to you, to make it clear to you that this is not going to be about that type of shades. Now let me put them down very delicately because I'm not going to, I'm not going to waste all the time wrapping them again for this video. We're going to non-vintage. Okay, so the first model we're going to see are... Uh, Chronologically speaking, we're going to, we're going chronologically now. We're talking for something to become vintage, it has to be 20 years old or older than 20 years. So we're going to 2007. A very rare instance. Nobody talks about these glasses. Nobody really, except for me, because I did unbox both of them on my channel. You could check the video out of both of these. Um, nobody talks about them. No famous people wore them. These have not been on anyone's radar, except for mine. Uh, and they are a very rare specimen, which I keep in this plastic container sealed off from oxygen, uh, of, of Chanel Haute Couture. Very rare for Chanel Haute Couture to have glasses in them, but we have, I'm going to show them to you, 2007. One of them is wrapped here in this tissue paper. I'm going to very delicately take them out. Hold on. Okay. These are extremely rare. As I said to you, haute couture. These are handmade, okay? Um, 2007. Model bijou numero 2. So this is number 2 from the runway. They had several models created. All of these crystals and uh, beading so there is like a silk um, like a, a, a pattern underneath on which each one of these has been hand stitched onto and then applied to the temples of the glasses same same apply uh, same um, system was used for the front panels of the frames so in fact cover my eyes so actually there you go this is the front of these glasses and it's not focusing this is so irritating you guys but anyway check it out and then the other side as well There you have the model number. So usually Chanel sunglasses always have a code, like a long code, but Haute Couture doesn't. It just has a number, the piece of the show. So this was number two. The model number is number two. And on the other side, super rare, because they are handmade. In fact, the inscription on the back on this temple says, um, Chanel, handmade in France. So you want to talk rare? Okay, it's not the chain sunglasses. The chain sunglasses for Chanel standards were produced for every boutique many times. In fact, in several collections because there are chain sunglasses with two different code numbers. But that's another story for another day. Um, this is rarity, okay? So, this is the first model um, I'm, I'm showing you today. But, actually... I will show you more than just this. 
just to be fair about it because I managed to hunt down from the same collection a second pair. So in fact I'm not showing you these two as two of the five. They're, they belong to the group one even though they are in their own rights unique. This is the second model. Very different from the first. The shape of the glasses, of the uh, frames and of the temples is very different than the first model. So now you can see the crystals and the patterns. All of this, you guys, is hand <laughs> applied, okay, onto the temples, onto the side of the frame here, as well as on this side. Oh my God, it's so complicated. And then to the side. So, as I was saying before, if we compare the two, you see how different they are. Even the temples, the different thickness of temples, the application of the crystals. So these are in their own right, completely different models of sunglasses, but they both hit the Haute Couture Chanel 2007 runway. Okay? Uh, even, oh my gosh, hold on you guys, I gotta be very delicate with these. Mm, there you have it. I mean, so they are two, but I'm going to list them as one. They are from the same collection after all. So, and uh, the black one is uh, Model Bijou Numero Un, and this is Numero Deux. So I'm waiting, you know, hunting, waiting to get the entire set, which you can imagine could take decades if it's ever going to become possible because maybe not all of the models sold and were produced and ordered, so I was extremely lucky to have found two, even, honestly. Okay, so this was number one. We're going chronologically here. So this is 2007, okay? Now I'm taking you to 2009. In 2009, this is my personal holy grail. I'm not showing them as the fifth model, but as the second. Uh, because we're going chronological here, but in 2009 of spring summer, uh, Chanel releases a runway piece exclusive to the runway Prêt à Porter. Spring summer 2009, uh, the most fascinating pair of sunglasses, in my humble opinion, ever made in in uh, sunglass history, um, and that would be the sideburn uh, sideburn sunglasses. Right, very much rock and roll. So this bit hanging here are actually sideburns. They're huge. They're very, very oversized. Um, and so when you wear them, you know, I mean, I'm not going to put them on. As I said, I, I wasn't going to. So, but if you have them on and you look to the side, these kind of really sit on the sideburns. Maybe I can. Just up to here. So you can see they would sit there. So this is a very fascinating concept, uh, spring, summer 2009, very fascinating concept of sunglasses. And I think whoever got the opportunity to design this model was a genius. Why am I saying this? Because when we consider sunglasses um, of the Occidental Western society and culture, uh, you always, you know, it's kind of like a status symbol. You would buy expensive sunglasses that have a chunky logo on the side to kind of show that you have money or show that you can uh, afford it. Um, but in fact, um, there's more to it when it comes to these particular shades than just that. Now, if we were to, for example, travel, 
let's say, to tribes in Africa that um, implement um, structural patterns and designs in creating tribal masks uh, for the sake and purpose of their own rituals, beautiful wooden carved uh, ornamental masks that have whatever sort of meaning. Um, to them, it's a symbol. What Occidental society, what Western society does is usually this colonialistic attitude of just like traveling to far away foreign countries uh, disenfranchising them, but also taking from them these special pieces that to them had a meaning. You know, you could find in many homes um, throughout America or Europe, people in their living rooms with these kind of African masks hanging on their living rooms, you know. And you ask them, well, what, are, what do they mean? Most of these people are not going to even know what meaning those masks have. They're just going to show off the fact that they went to Africa, that they bought these masks, and they would just hang them on their wall as decoration, when in fact those masks actually had meaning, more a deeper meaning, a more psychological, um, religious meaning. Now, well, how does that relate to sunglasses? Well, because as those tribes represented themselves in their communication and rituals through those masks, our consumer society does it through sunglasses. You see, sunglasses are a status symbol that represents our masks. They represent the social rank we come from according to what sort of sunglasses you're wearing or not i mean they tell a lot about you and within the ritual aspect of consumer society that we live in sunglasses really tell you where it's at so i found it very fascinating that for example as i said if you go to africa you you know i'm not talking about everybody but a lot of people who just are very superficial about thinking they own the world they travel around the world buying stuff from other people taking them back back home and hanging them on the wall without knowing the meaning without knowing the real meaning about anything so you can imagine that this particular tribal mask we're talking about had a very specific meaning to the tribe where it was made but taken out of its context and then hung up on a wall in some American high society superficial person's living room, it's gonna they won't know what that mask's meaning really is. So I found it very fascinating how that translated into this. Why? Because as I said, sunglasses are our consumer society's tribal masks. And the symbology behind the sideburns is something very typical to Western society. From rock and roll, Elvis Presley, the sideburn is a symbol that we relate to on a pop cultural level. We know exactly what this stands for. We have, an, a, a, we have a very precise vision of the type of person that would have sideburns that thick on the side here. So when we see this mask, we in fact immediately associate it to a specific type of pop cultural, sociological, sociopolitical, and historical time frame. So this is indeed our tribal mask. Genius move from Chanel's side to create. They are ugly, but to me they're super beautiful. Um, so that would be that. The tribal Western society uh, sideburn sunglasses slash Elvis Presley. In fact, the model on the runway that wore these babies also had like a Chanel guitar, a matelassé packaged guitar, like very rock and roll, gonna, gonna take the guitar out of its Chanel bag for a guitar and then play the guitar while wearing the Elvis Presley sunglasses. These are perfection. This is my holy grail of Chanel sunglasses and uh, nobody really talks about them except me. That was 2009. We are now moving to the Cruise Collection 10, um, 9 slash 10. Cruise 2010, Venice Lido. The Venice Lido Collection, which is one of my favorites by Karl Lagerfeld. We have here um, a wonderful model, very, very rare. They were made in several colorways, but the black one with gold trimming is very rare. These are the Vampira Bat Shades. Now, these have a very interesting story. There you have the double C's over there. These are the Vampira Bat Shades. 
So Karl Lagerfeld back then was a fan of, well, you know, he collects art, art books, art history. He knew his art history. He knew about Edward Melkarth. Edward Melkarth was um, an artist that created for Peggy Guggenheim. Oh, this is funny how big they look now if I'm like, I'm just going to do this. It looks like they're huge, but they're not that big, obviously. Um, Edward Melkarth uh, created for Peggy Guggenheim, who is the lady that literally owns the Guggenheims. She spent a lot of time in Venice in the Guggenheim Museum of Venice, um, lived there. And Edward Melkarth made her sunglasses out of wood and then um, with gold leaf, handmade, hand carved and covered with gold leaf, butterfly sunglasses. Not the bat. The bat is a bit thinner. It looks like bat wings. The butterfly is a bit thicker. Carl also created the bat, um, the butterfly sunglasses for this collection. But in this case, for the sake of showing, showcasing only five, I'm not going to show you the whole selection of, of the bat and the butterfly. I do have them though, but the bat is my favorite in terms of the shape. So anyway, he made for Peggy the butterfly model. Edward Melkarth, truth be told, first made for Vampira in the States the bat glasses in wood, gold plated or gold leaf covered. Peggy Guggenheim loved them. So Edward made a copy for Peggy Guggenheim as well on top of making her the butterfly shades. So these glasses, in fact, are more connected to Vampira because they are the bat shades, but in reality, also Peggy Guggenheim ordered them together with the butterfly shades. So they are a symbol of Venice from an artistic point of view, like in modern art history, Peggy Guggenheim would be photographed many a time in Venice wearing her butterfly shades by Edward Melkarth. Karl Lagerfeld acquired for his personal collection the copy, one copy of the bat shades from Edward Melkarth for Peggy Guggenheim. And then the design team at Chanel from that original model created the more simplistic, kind of more streamlined Chanel looking bat shades for Chanel, for the Cruise 2010 collection at the Venice Lido. Amazing. So this is literally the batch, the Chanel bat shades. You guys, they're so wonderfully executed in acetate with the gold. Um, you see the gold trimming on the sides? Where is it? There. This is actually a slit that's carved into the acetate. And then the gold, this really rich Byzantine type of gold is then um, poured in and placed, well, actually painted on top of it into the slit, into this kind of tracks. And we have them also here following the entire glasses all the way around the temples and all the way around the frames. Look at that, even there at the nose top, at the bridge, the bottom part of the bridge and the top part of the bridge as well. So these would be the bat shades the Chanel bat shades from the Cruise Collection 2010, inspired by Edward Melkarth. How genius that Lagerfeld thought about these details, thought about this to implement them within a collection that he dedicates to the Byzantine opulence of Venice. He didn't also forget to implement within Venice also a modern take on Venice, which is Peggy Guggenheim in modern day times. Genius move. From the same collection, also from the Cruise 2010, comes a model which I have to say isn't that unknown because it has indeed been utilized in, um, for example, Sex and the City, the movie. <laughs> this is not a pizza, you guys. These are sunglasses and this is the box they come in. This huge Chanel box, very well protected. Look at this Chanel tissue paper all around. I love the way it was wrapped and sent to me just like an haute couture dress. And then inside is 
another container. Okay, hold on, you guys. Okay. And the container comes in... Another container. Okay, so this is the box. It's a bit dusty there, isn't it? Um, you have the little Chanel logo on there. This is all in textile. It's all covered in this kind of gorgeous satiny material. ASMR. And uh, the buttons also carry the Chanel logo. Like they really went in into these details, didn't they? Oh my God, it's not focused. This is so irritating. There you go. One, two. You're like, oh my God, bag in a bag in a bag in a bag. Yeah. This is how we do it. We got this kind of, it's not leather, it's like a leathery material on the inside, very soft. And then you get this custom made, I mean custom made, Chanel made it appositely just for these glasses, this huge sunglass pouch. They've never made one this long before. It's literally this long. <laughs> and inside, we have very, very soft, um, we have cotton on the outside, but on the inside you have the microfiber. The entire pouch is covered in the microfiber cloth. Here you have them, because we are in Venice after all, and this is for the Venice Lido Cruise Collection. Venice is famous for its masquerades and balls. This is a genius piece. It is a masquerade pair of shades by Chanel. Carl or whoever from his, look at that double C, that's typical for Venice, all of their kind of poles in the water and gondolas, they all kind of have these like sticks and on top of the stick they have a symbol, a twirly symbol of Venice and he did that but in the Chanel way, with the double C. So, you know, the Venetian masquerade, you kind of cover your face with, with, your, with a mask. But the twist here is that you actually cover your face with sunglasses but they're so useless because you need one hand to constantly hold them. So you can only have, you can only use one hand while you're wearing these. So it's like a beautifully constructed concept of sunglasses that are a mask at the same time. So you need them to protect yourself from the sun, but they're so useless. You, you these are so unpractical. I, I love, I just, this is, come on, you got, it doesn't get much better than this. It doesn't get much useless than this, but it also doesn't get much better than this when it comes to, you know, collecting fashion. Also in acetate, the double C on top is in metal and everything is screwed together with these beautifully lacquered black metal screws that kind of keep this stick, this acetate stick, attached to the frames here. And uh, they do come with extra detailing at the bottom here of the stick with a double C that has been um, etched into uh, the acetate and then covered with resin in gold. I apologize for this stupid camera. It doesn't want to do it. There you have it. That would be number four. And number five, last but not least in this rundown and showdown, is Spring Summer 2012. A wonderful landscape that Carl created uh, with um, under under the under the sea. <laughs> it's called like the Mermaid Collection. The entire runway was created to look like 
a pearly bottom of the ocean with light reflecting off of every pearlescent surface. Florence and the machine were singing and she was singing. She actually, a, a kind of a huge oyster opens up and then like she walks onto the oyster, stands there dressed in Chanel and kind of sings her music like a mermaid while the models start running down the catwalk. These are very rare. Not be, not the particular model per se, but this colorway. This is the exact colorway, the jellyfish color colorway that a mermaid would wear that hit the runway. It is um, a rare instance of Chanel utilizing translucent acetate in beige, because beige is Coco's color, but the beige in this case translates into a jellyfish color. So these are the sunglasses that were worn on the runway and it is uh, Carl's and his designer's creative team's take on if a mermaid were to wear sunglasses, how would they be? So they're made out of, the idea is that they look like they're made out of a um, jellyfish <laughs> or some invertebrate that swims underneath the ocean. So it's translucent like water. You could see through them. They're so watery and dreamy. And then, of course, what would a mermaid do? A mermaid would embellish this jellyfish with pearls. And in fact, look how beautiful they've, how they've constructed them. The pearls are not really visible from the front. These are to die for. It took me ages to hunt these down. And this, this is the colorway that hit the runway. They did make four different colorways in the first run. These are runway boutique exclusives. They did make uh, this one, which hit the runway. Then there was a gray translucent version, black acetate, which I also have in my collection, and a rose pink, full-colored uh, acetate. Uh, now, the effect really only works with this beige translucent material. Why am I saying this? Because the pearls are embedded into the acetate so that... Um, with the translucent version of the glasses, when you look in the front, you see the pearls embedded inside of the acetate. You see them from within, inside of the acetate. But when you flip them in the back, they're actually poking, or, or from the top, they're embedded in the back of the shades on top. Almost look like teeth. This is also a rare case. You know that Chanel uses glass pearls most of the time. Not all of the time, but most of the time for their satoires and their necklaces and chokers. They use glass pearls mostly. For the occasion of these shades, and because we are really underwater, and because the idea is to deliver a concept of mermaids wearing glasses, um, they utilized freshwater pearls. These are not glass pearls. These are real pearls. Fresh water pearls, not salt water pearls, but they are real pearls. And they should be 25. Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Yeah, 25 fresh water pearls attached to the top of the shades. You can see them perfectly in the back, and then as we flip them to the front, they get hidden by this jellyfish translucent acetate, and they're just to die for. And here's the twist twist. Genius move. Actually, when you wear them is when the real magic happens, because what do pearls do? Coco Chanel was always about wearing pearls around the neck. The older the woman gets, as she says, the more white she should wear around her neck to reflect light from underneath her, above the face, to rejuvenate the looks of the face. What these pearls do when you're wearing them so close to, they're floating like little clouds right above your eyes. They capture light, and because they're rounded, they refracture the light back onto your eyes. So in fact, when you are wearing these shades, you have a constant, fuzzy, fluffy, gorgeous, opalescent, pearlescent, shimmer above your eyes, which for your personal view embellishes the vision of the world because it, it just gives that, it's like a filter. It gives like a soft pearlescent filter over everything you see because it filters light to your eye over through the pearls in a different way than you would usually perceive light in your eye. 
it's a wonderful effect, very comfortable, very soothing to wear, very, very soothing to wear. So these shades are not just gorgeous, beautiful, and conceptually really thought through to match within that underwater collection of these mermaids walking dressed in Chanel. Not just does it aesthetically fit, but it also has a functionality that really soothes the eyes while you're wearing it. On the sides, on the two side temples, we do have the logos, not double C's, but rather the whole spelled out logo. Let me see. There, you have the whole Chanel in metal spelled out logo on both sides. To die for. Except for the Haute Couture pieces, the two first ones I showed you from Haute Couture 2007, which are made in France. All of the other ones in acetate that you have seen so far, up until now, were made in Italy. Because Luxottica is the manufacturer of Chanel sunglasses since their inception, literally since they went into mass production. Uh, these are all boutique exclusives, but um, also for their regular Chanel uh, authorized retailers, which began around 1999, that's when Luxottica took over and started producing all of them. I hope you've liked this uh, video, this excursion through really rare pieces that not many people know about uh, from Chanel uh, sunglasses and eyewear that is not older than 20 years, that are not vintage yet, but that will become very important in the future when they do become vintage and some starlets discover them. So let me read your chats. Let me see what you guys are saying. Jack says, oh, the Ab Fab glasses. Yes, from 1992. Lori says, I love those. Mr. Philip Fevel says, oh, my God, you just offended Adina. She is all the bit the starlet in her mind. Yeah, but starlet, Adina is a star. Adina is not a starlet. Lie to me, 101 says, those chain sunglasses are so cool. My dream is to buy some vintage Chanel and Louis Vuitton for my birth year, which happens to be 1992. Niem says, um... Jamie Chua said she should wear gloves on them. Uh, she unboxed her Birkin bag, but she does not because she would like the bag to feel the direct love from her hands. Oh, that's so beautiful. Um, ah, Caleb, he guessed that. Caleb is like, I hope to see the masquerade shades. Um, oh, all of all, thank you so much for becoming a member, sweetie. Thank you. Thank you so much. Brendan says, 2007 was cringe, LOL for me. Uh, Brendan says, okay, Chanel. Um, Brendan is sending hearts. Laurie says, I have the Chanel compact that Meg Ryan used uh, in When Harry Met Sally in that famous scene. It is a powder compact trimmed in 18 karat gold. I never knew it was in the movie until someone told me. Brendan says, super cute. Very 007, or, or very 2007. Brendan says, stunner shades. Lie to me says, wow. <laughs> Rail says, they're beautiful. Brendan says, bling, bling. Jack says, I was seven years old in 2007. <laughs> Time flies, Jack. Brendan says, I was in seventh grade in 2007. Debbie says, these beaded are one of my faves. Val says, LOL, I was eight years old. Brendan says, yes, middle school vibes. Olfactive Story says, wow, that's a concept. Sunglasses uh, to blind others. <laughs> they are beautiful, says Lori. Richmond says, the suspense is killing me. Debbie says, not a Luxottica piece. Uh, they, well, yeah. They are actually, even the Haute Couture are Luxottica because the acetates were made by Luxottica. Um, I love the crystals on the black frame. Yeah, they're gorgeous. They're very goth, aren't they? The shape is so Hollywood 2007, LOL, and the bling early Kardashian vibes, says Brendan. Bell says, yes, the crystals on the black frame are to die for. <laughs> Lori says, uh, hold on a second. 
uh, Jin Cat says, hello to everyone and a belated Valentine smooch to Deco. Thank you, Jin. Big smooch to you too, sweetie. Uh, Lie to me 11 says, those crystals are beautiful. I would have loved those during my bling bling era when I was a bit younger. What a collector's piece. Kira says, I love the look of them, but couldn't wear them with my personality. Rich Mitch says, those glasses have uh, mouton chops. Brandon says, cool sideburns, honestly. Love those so much. Very creative. Debbie says, Elvis sunglasses. Candy Fluff says, fancy Elvis has entered the building. Laurie says, this is what I was thinking, Rich. Mouton chops, LOL. Mouton chops. Elvis approves, says Mr. Philip Fabulous. Candy Fluff says, I love that they have toyed with our concept of what sunglasses can do. Brandon says, I wear cheap sunglasses from Goodwill. Candy says, they also look a bit like armor. They do look like armor. But then again, sunglasses are armor. Sunglasses are also made to, not just to protect you from the sun, armor against the sun, but they also create this aura of mystery. Why does Anna Winter always wear sunglasses at all the fashion shows? Always vintage Chanel, always that same model. It's not just to protect herself from the flashing lights of the show, but also to keep that aura of mystery. She's also shielding herself away from us, from our gaze and views, and also gives her that aura of being more tough and rough and impenetrable. It's a shield. It's an armor. Sunglasses in our society are an armor on so many levels. Uh, Melly says, I only have one pair of Chanel sunglasses, the camellias. Melly says, Jacob's collection is incredible. Thank you. And Yem says, you, you are so right. And also, a beautiful pair of sunglasses make us look so much better, more confident, and look great on the photos, too, for our images on social media, such as Facebook. Melly says, the vampire glasses are my favorite. A fact of story says, oh, can't you wear them? I'd love to see them on you. I mean, you can see that I, I wear them on, you know, on um, Coco Chanel is in my house on my Instagram profile. Like I have photos of me wearing them, but I have too much makeup on now. I don't want to damage them. Like, because then I would have to spend a lot of time cleaning them up again uh, between three videos that I'm having, you know, that I have to shoot now. Um... And Melly says, Alfactive uh, story, Jacob wears them on his Halloween video back in 2016, I think. Yeah, I do. I do, Melly. I do, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Such a cool shape, says all of all. Brendan says, Vampire is Hollywood. Oh, Vampira is Hollywood. Yes, Vampire is so Hollywood. Um, Vampires of Venice, says Jack. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, Melly says, yeah, Alfactive, yeah, check out the 2015 Halloween Fashion Favorites video, that's right, I wore them in 2015 in my fa in my Halloween Fashion Favorites video, Brandon says, and just like that, I know, it's very Carrie Bradshaw, isn't it, Yam yeah, says, ah, ha, ha, I really think that it is a pizza, Jacob, oh, yeah, yeah, the flat box for the glasses looked like a pizza box, that box, I'm expecting Pee Wee Herman style glasses, oh my god, you guys, Melly says, I love these two, the drama of the box says I'm Louie. And Yem says, amazing box. Lied to me says, the packaging is so extra. Love it. Jin Cat says, such a tease. <laughs> Brendan says, spill the tea. I want these glasses, says Melly. Candy Fluff says, oh, how fun. Lied to me says, oh, love, love, love. Vel says, these are iconic. Iconics as well. <laughs> Melly says, love the Venice collection. Brendan says, is the bunker in Venice? LOL. Fact of Story says, oh, wow, I imagine Glenn Close wearing that one uh, PP. MK says, this Venezia pair is the best from your collection. Uh, Nim says, uh, oh, but do we have to uh, hold the glasses like that the whole day? Yep, they're useless practically. <laughs> Debbie says, uh, fabulous, I had forgotten about the masquerade shades. My CC88 says, so cool. Jin Cat says, lovely, but how do you hold a drink and smoke while using them? Somebody has to do it for you. Candy Fluff says, luxury. Cha. Melly says, it's an art piece. Lie to me says, this is what I'll wear when I'm 80. I'll be that mysterious rich aunt. Melly says, all of them, really. Uh, and Yem says, I will go to the gym and train more muscle for the right hand to use these sunglasses. My CC idiot says, amazing, so special. Olfactive Stories says, lie to me. Oh my God, so funny. I want to be that rich aunt too. 
Candy Fluff says, love the little touches and I don't even like gold. Brendan says, rundown showdown? Oh, the pearls, says Melly. Candy Fluff says, oh, is it sad? And Melly says, another favorite collection of mine. Vela says, mine too, Melly. The underwater collection, spring, summer 2012 was amazing. Way to pick out the most iconic pieces, Jacob, says Candy Fluff. Thank you so much. Um, David says, I'm back. And Jacob is talking about mermaids. I love it. <laughs> Welcome back, David. David says, it's fascinated by mermaids. I'm fascinated by mermaids. They're my favorite mythical creature. Candy says, the neutral color makes them understated. Love these. David says, if only a mermaid would enchant me. Um... Sign language boy says, Jacob, ah, it's so good to see y'all. No idea here in Texas. We had no power or water for five days in eight degree weather. Finally have internet today. And you bet I was smelling like number five all day. Oh, sign language boy. Thank you so much for tuning in. All our love to you and thoughts and prayers. And I'm so happy to hear that internet is back and that you're in good spirits and that Chanel helped you get through this because it's a wonderful smell. It is. It helped me through a lot of tough times. MK says, OMG, Jacob, you must absolutely get this tiny Chanel sunglasses bag to make your collection perfectly coherent. It is an injunction, by the way. Um, David says, 24, perfection. <laughs> David says, it's also refreshing that they didn't use the traditional prism colors that are usually associated to mermaids. Jin Cat, yeah, no, they didn't. Good point, good point, David. Jin Cat says, I'm wondering how all these are found. Debbie says, Jacob is a hunter. Yeah, to quote good old Bjork, I'm a hunter. <laughs> the song. Brendan says, oh my God, you must try the Giorgio Fine Fragrance Mist. Uh, this was so special, says Melly. Thank you. Niem says, for me, the headache about sunglasses is that when the glasses are light colors, they are nice on photos, but uh, cannot protect the shades from the strong sunlights. Candy Fluff says, I hope you have liked this video. Meanwhile, everyone is drooling. Oh, thank you. Niam says, uh, when glasses are dark, they protect the eyes, but they are not so nice on photos. I'm so lucky uh, to have found one that satisfies both conditions from Chanel. I look great on all photos. Thank God it's Chanel. Oh, cute. Melly says, I know, right, Candy? Uh, Georgian Sim says, uh, Lemming officially created. Need those mermaid glasses. Madonna Fitzgerald says, Brendan Fernandez, I don't think the body mist smells anything. Oh, body mist and sunglasses. Cha. Oh, Caleb says, thanks for showing. Um... Wait, where did I, I need to find, a lie to me says, if I get this job I applied for, I want to buy my first piece of Chanel jewelry or sunglasses. Well said, lied to, uh, well said, lied to me, but I missed Caleb's, there, there it is. Thanks for showing, they're all amazing, how fabulous to have these and more in your collection. Thank you, Caleb, yeah, I got a lot of them, you know, just needed to kind of tone it down to just a couple to show you guys. Um, yeah. Diego Gold says, uh, Jacob, I wonder what is your most shocking Chanel vintage find? Uh, Brandon says, sunglasses are needed in my life. Oh, Diego, that's maybe a topic for another video. What is your most shocking Chanel vintage find? Let's leave that for another day, perhaps. Perhaps. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please do thumb it up. And subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, but like my content uh, here on YouTube. You can also push the join button next to the subscription button. And if you do so, you get extra perks by becoming a member of the Fashion Bunker. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Deco Ball Spelled Together, to get extra perks there as well. And become a patron of the arts, sweetie darling. Uh, scrolling here on the sidebar, I would like to uh, showcase to you all my patrons and my members and the super chators that have contributed to sustain and fund the Fashion Bunker. Thank you guys so much. You are my executive producers in a way because we have these scrolling texts at the back with thanking all of y'all personally. Thank you guys so much for supporting the Fashion Bunker. It really means the world to me. While we're uh, talking about Chanel, you can also follow me on two Instagram profiles that I dedicated to Chanel. One is called Coco Chanel is in my house, all spelled together, dedicated to my Chanel collection and to everything that I find interesting about what the Chanel brand is doing today. 
And then the other profile is called Coco Chanel Privé, all spelled together, dedicated to Coco Chanel, to her life, to her legacy, everything that she has done in her life. Um, it's kind of like traveling through time and going into the past when she was still alive. It's just a wonderful, magical thing for me to kind of bring her back to life with every post I make, you know. Uh, so that's that. And in terms of sunglasses, let me know in the comment section down below which one of these that I've showcased are your favorites or if you have other favorites. And also let me know in the comment section down below if you uh, would want this series to continue for me to showcase more of these glasses uh, for you guys like in different compartments and departments and sections because this one was kind of the top five rarest of um, Chanel sunglasses of recent times that are not vintage but we could really go into specific details we could classify categories you know it could be like the, the rarest five from the past five years from the past ten years you know from the whatever have you because I do have archived from more or less every collection, really, of Chanel sunglasses. There's, of Chanel seasons and collections, there's always something for everything. And I, I keep hunting, I always keep looking, I'm always on the prowl, I'm always have my eyes peeled open for whatever new cometh our way from Chanel because they do have a wonderful design team and they, when Chanel delivers, they really deliver. They also make a lot of crappy models, mostly for regular retail releases, but when they deliver a good, uh, boutique exclusive or runway exclusive piece they deliver like no other just saying keeping it real thank you guys so much for watching until next time never forget to never give up on love love you all see you soon take care bye